In number one, it says to use the following words to complete the diagram to the right. Well, whatever you put in this top box must include everything below it, or everything below it must be this. And that would be your four-sided polygons. So quadrilateral, and I'm going to abbreviate, is at the top. Underneath would fall the parallelogram. as the rectangle, rhombus, and square are all parallelograms. But the next two boxes, so side by side, would be a rectangle and a rhombus. Because a rhombus is not a rectangle, and a rectangle is not a rhombus. But the square is both a rectangle and rhombus. So that would fall underneath. In number two, I'm focusing on the rhombus, as I mark um, my givens, I'm going to put everything or mark the whole picture based on that. So I'll explain what that means. So if BC is 4, CD is also 4, AD is also 4, and AB is also 4 because the sides of a rhombus are congruent. With BCD being 60, if I trace that, B, C, D, this whole angle is 60, but I know this diagonal is going to bisect that. So this is 30, and this is 30. Opposite angles are congruent, so this is 30 as well, those two angles. We know the diagonals are perpendicular, so every angle in the interior at that point of intersection is 90. So now I know if I just look at one triangle, say I look at this one up here to finish, if this is 30, this is going to be 60, so all three angles in that add up to 180. So this is 60, this is 60, this is 60. Now to go over, uh, CD. CD we have marked as 4. Angle 1, right here, we have noted as 60 degrees. Angle 3, right here, is 30 degrees. B, E, we don't have anything there yet. B, D, we don't have anything there. Angle A, B, C, so this whole angle together, 60 and 60, is going to be 120. Angle 2 we have marked is 60, and angle 4 we have marked is 30. And then now we need to look at the diagonals. So let's go back to B, E. B, E is right here and we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And knowing the hypotenuse of 4, we know opposite BE, or um, BE, which is opposite the 30, is half the hypotenuse, so this is 2. And if that's 2, that means that is 2. So BE is 2, and then BD would be 2 plus 2, or 4. And then EC, so going back to the triangle in blue, Opposite the 60 is whatever that shorter leg is, so 2 radical 3. And that's using the properties of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The square, I'm going to follow the same format. It says that AB is 10, so that means all sides are 10. AB, BC, so that's part A, AD, and CD. We also know there are 90 degree angles in here, and that each angle is 45. Because you take and bisect a 90 degree angle, you got two 45s. Okay, so angle 1 is 45 degrees. Angle ABC, you highlight that this whole angle, 45 and 45, is 90. AEB, Tracing that, A, E, B, this angle right here is 90 degrees. Angle 3, 45. Now to focus on the segments. A, C. A, C is this diagonal. Well, if I look at this 45, this big 45, 45, 90, if each side is 10, we know in the 45, 45, 90, it goes x, x, x radical 2. So AC is going to be 10 radical 2. EB, let's grab purple. EB right here 
Well, this whole diagonal, because the diagonals are congruent, AC equals BD. So they're both 10 radical 2. And BE is half of the whole. So half of 10 radical 2 would give us EB 5 radical 2. DB, that's the whole. Well, we just said that was the same as AC. Diagonals are congruent, so that's 10 radical 2. And then last, AE is half of 10 radical 2, which equals 5 radical 2.